I acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation and pay respects to Elders and thank Colin for your generous welcoming us to Wurundjeri land through the smoking ceremony. I also recognise all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples who are joining us today. Peoples who have lived, loved, raised their families and cared for this country and waters for millennia before the arrival of the British. We were very healthy at the time of colonisation. We had a good age population structure. We had healthy kids, healthy elders. We had well-being. We lived our well-being. It was a way of life. Well-being is a critical part of justice. It's a critical part of child protection. It's a critical part of all of the things, all of the various things that the policy partnerships are about. And so I think part of our role is making sure that we are, are informing some of those, some of that work and making sure that there's a social and emotional wellbeing framework that sits under those policy efforts. How do we make sure that those efforts, whether we're doing uh, early childhood care uh, and education or child protection, that they're grounded on that suit model and that that's reflecting our idea of what it means to be well, um, but also understanding the role of culture, the role of community, the role of country in those things. We get a wealth of cultural connectedness, of collective spirit, of empowerment, and fills our cup up to go back out and do the things that we do every day. And know that what we're here for is for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Uh, this is, man, I'm proud to be black, you know. It's so easy to listen to. There have been some great speakers at this conference and I wish everybody else was here, all the rest of the Yawa mob, you know, to come and listen to what's going on because it connects everybody up. When you work in an Aboriginal service, there's a lot of cultural load on you and you often work long hours and you're really focused on delivering in your own area. What's good about us getting together and really talking about what we're doing and where we're going is it's refreshing that there's other people out there doing things that will support your service as well. And it's also refreshing to get outside of your own silo and figure out ways that we can work together in the future. I want to acknowledge the pain and suffering of our peoples that has been caused by the ongoing trauma of colonisation. Our communities have been deeply impacted by its effects on our mental and spiritual health. To close the mental health gap, we need to provide a collaborative and holistic approach to our social and emotional well-being, one that is culturally appropriate. I think it's an achievement for Gay Dewey to have their first um, national conference, especially since we were established during COVID and we've only had the virtual conference previously. Developing the program was a bit of a challenge, trying to have a good balance between academics, service providers, lived experience, and not just having people speak at people, but having interactive workshops and a range of panels.